the biblical truth of our hymn, Our Great Savior, by John Wilbur Chapman. This is the 59th study in this series. Now, he was a Presbyterian evangelist in the late 1970s, 17th century. He traveled with a gospel singer, Charles Alexander. A public de declaration of his Christian faith was at the age of 17, where he also joined the Richmond Presbyterian Church. He took on many pastorates before taking the evangelistic circuit, and he began preaching with the legendary Dwight Moody in 1893. Then he went off his own evangelistic events. Uh, not for personal res responsible for the conversion, but Chapman's strong influence was on the ministry of Billy Sunday. So we're looking at a good, strong, evangelistic hymn here. And this is a great one. Uh, in 1909, Chapman demanded that any field evangelist who doubted in the inerrancy of scripture be removed from the ministry. I wonder how the Presbyterians feel about that today. You doubted the scriptures, you doubted the scriptures for holy and right, he boots you. So, let's move on. And I'm going to say that this hymn is remarkable. Jesus, he is not ashamed of the name that's above all names. And I don't know if you realize, and, I, and if you've gone with many of all these studies, you've heard me say several times, it is remarkable that these hymns do not have the name Jesus. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. That name is the name of Jesus Christ. And Mr. Chapman is not ashamed of Jesus. Jesus, what a friend for sinners. And maybe I'm going to jump ahead of myself, but Jesus is a friend that sticks to you forever. He takes us forever, eternally, to be our friend. And not many human friends will do that. Now you may have a few that will go off into their friendship into the eternal life but as I sit here and do this study I'm telling you I've had many Christians oh we're with you 100% and yeah right on and they're going I've got Christians who violated us because we stand upon the Bible I got so many friends I don't know where they are Christian brothers and sisters, and I, I pray for all, all the ones in my prayer book, but where is their friendship? But I know I have one friend. At any time, he'll come and listen to me. He'll come and give me great advice through the word. Lover of my soul. How much did Christ love me? The Bible says we love him because he first loved us. Uh, I can't quote the scripture completely to my error, but he laid down his life for the friend, for his friends. A friend will lay down his life for his friend. That is true friendship in Jesus Christ laid his life down. That I might be eternally through my soul to be saved, become a child of God. And he's always been with me once I receive him. Friends may fail me, and they do. They do, I'm sorry to say, I've got Christian friends who have failed. And they didn't fail me, they failed Jesus because I'm sticking to the scriptures. Even the Apostle Paul says, Demas has forsaken me. And going to Thessalonica. 
At one point, Mark took off. Whatever reason, I don't know. The Bible doesn't say what the reason was, but he took off. But thank God he came back. And for whatever reason, uh, how exotic to their thinking that I may be with the Word of God and preaching and doing the things that I do and believing the things I do, it ashames other Christians. You can't be that, you know, separate. You can't be that, you know. Yes, I am. And I say, listen, you get off the bandwagon, I'm not getting off. I'm going to keep moving. You want to get back on, I'll help you. You want to learn to grow and do right as a Christian, come on board. What's that moment, hey, you don't want to do it no more? Hop off. Because I'm going to serve Christ the best of my ability. And I, I have a hard time living for Christ myself. Never mind excessive baggage that doesn't want to do it right. Foes, your enemy, assail me. You're gonna have you're gonna have friends that are gonna leave you, you're gonna have foes. You will have the enemies out there. Marvel not if the world hates you, Jesus said, and know that it hated me first. And when you're gonna take a stand, you're gonna live for Christ. You're gonna have enemies. And Mr. Chapman dealing with Dwight Moody and dealing with uh, Billy Sunday, Billy Sunday had enemies of the alcohol crowd because he preached against alcohol and the alcohol places shut down. Evangelistic work going out there preaching Jesus and nothing else. You're going to make enemies. And your biggest enemy is going to be those friends who are Christians. Oh, that's not what the Jesus would do. That's not what the Bible says. You're turning people away. I let my light shine and blah, 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 blah. They are not a friend of Jesus. Now, if they're saved, Jesus is their friend. But they have betrayed the friendship because they're not doing what Jesus said to do. He, my Savior, makes me whole. We'll look at the, the refrain at the end like we always do. But what is being whole? What is being complete? Is when you please God. I'll tell you what success is for the Christian. It's to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Now, I will settle. And I tried to serve the Lord and I tried to do right, but I don't do it all. I'm sorry, I don't. I will settle for well done. Now, we have a couple ministry as a family. One's closing this Friday and several things coming up for this month. And I want to do right. And when I do something and I do it for the Lord, that makes me whole. Number two, Jesus. What a strength and weakness. And as far as being evangelistic myself, and this this Chapman who has who's been an evangelist, and there comes times in the work in me street preaching and for Chapman and Dwight Moody and all the, the men, not just the great men, but all men who have evangelistic meetings and outreach. There comes time that for some of us, you, there's some people you just want to punch in the nose. There's some people that will try to shut you up. There are people who will do what they can to stop you. There are people who will try to put to end what you're doing for Christ. And it, get bo it gets bothersome. And it gets weak. And when you go in Christ, and when you try, it, 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 sometimes it's hard when you get these, these obstacles that, you know, you're trying to preach the gospel, and you're trying to pray to the Lord that, you know, these people or this person is bothering me, and Lord God, help me as I'm 
trying to get to God's will. And that strength comes in the Lord. And not only when you accomplish the evangelistic work for Jesus, and then sometimes the Lord will send somebody along and shake your hand, pat you on the back, say, I like what you're doing. Don't give up. Or those words there too. And that's, don't you realize that when when God sends somebody, whatever you're doing evangelistic work, when God sends somebody to congratulate you, that's the Lord's strength. He say, hey, go for it. Keep going. I know you have problems. I know that person is giving you a hard time. But keep going. My biggest thing is, with my public ministry, I wonder, do people hear me? And I get aggravated. The fact is that what go, what's going on right now is maybe is being prevented from people being, being hearing the gospel. And the Lord will send somebody and say, hey, you know, I like that message. Or, hey, you know, I'm glad you're preaching the truth. Or there'll be, and the Lord just strengthened me by, they are listening. And I could tell by their faces, you know, mostly those that get angry, they heard what I said. And that's not the Lord putting muscles on your arm. That's the Lord saying, you know, keep going. That's Jesus with strength. Weakness. I just wish sometimes he would take over the weakness of my body. My body is getting old and I can't do what I used to do. But I'm doing something. Let me hide myself in him, in Jesus. And the world is as ruckus and muckus in sin. Churches are ruckus and muckus in sin. I talked to someone the other day and well, beloved in the ministry, he, he's not going to church because the church is good church, but they're so w wild up in the world and in the flesh. And even so that I have been in churches as such, and it's like, Lord God, just let me get inside you and get out from, from the human race. Let me get inside you where it's holy, where it's right, and it's righteousness, and there is no sin. And that place is when you get together with the Lord in prayer or in your Bible study. Tempting. You know, temptation comes. Temptation will not stop because I receive Christ. Temptation forms all realms. Temptation for you to sin. Temptation for you to stop. Temptation for you to go with the world. Temptation to go follow those friends that are not being faithful to the Lord. Don't give in to those unholy temptations. Go into the holy temptations. Say there's holy temptations. Yeah, do right. Be right. Be holy. Be righteous. How about those temptations? tried and God will try you the world will try you your friends will try you your family will try you and God is just for us to show where our kinks are where our weaknesses are and I know a lot of my sins by God showing me where those sins are where I have failed in my Christian walk and sometimes failing. That's why we got First John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to wash us, to cleanse us of our sins, I mean, to wash of our sins and cleanse us. Because I am saved does not mean I'm not going to fail and I'm not going to sin. And I dealt with a guy one time, oh, he never sins. Oh, you're sinning right now. Again, here's a man who's been on the evangelistic circuit. And this man has seen trials and tribulations, and he's had to leave his family, you know, behind at home while he goes out. And Billy Sunday, watching Billy Sunday, Dwight Moody with all the troubles and problems that followed and with him. When you step into the ring that I'm going to serve God, I'm going to preach the gospel, and I know this for a very fact, 
You better believe you will have Christians as your enemy. You will have the world as your enemy. You will have Satan as your enemy. And when the sower went out to sow the word, the first thing that Jesus said was Satan was there. You become on the battlefield. And a lot of times, all through battlefields in life, you've lost a good friend. You've seen somebody get up and run the other direction. And I'm not really one for secular books, but if you want to know what kind of action that is, I would read All Quiet in the Western Front. I think there were four or five good friends, and you know, they stuck together into death. They had all kinds of things. He, Jesus, my strength, my victory wins. Again, I can resort to what Chapman's going through here as an evangelist myself that I have seen myself do public ministry in my flesh. Yes, it will happen. And that's the worst time of, the, of any ministry, any soul winning. When you go in your flesh, you won't get victory. But when I go prayed up, when I go up seeking Lord, and I, I'll tell the Lord, say, Lord, I know I'm going to have this problem. I got this problem every single week. And when you when you stand there, and, and the, the aggravation is there, and the, the troubles are there, and it's the devil trying to stop you, and you see the Lord give you a little relief. That's the Lord. And when you don't go in prayer, as I can personally testify, you will see all kinds of ruckus. The worst thing you can do to go as a soldier in Christ is to go without prayer. You will meet the head, the enemy straight on. And he will have that weapon pointed at your forehead. I learned from personal experience. Ooh, three. Jesus again. What a help in sorrow. People turn to prescription drugs, they turn to illegal drugs, they turn to alcohol, they turn to tobacco, they turn to a doctor. And many Christians don't even turn to Jesus, their comforter. He's not only a friend, he's a comforter. And James says we, we, we receive not because we ask not. And when we got trials and troubles and, and sorrows and pain and suffering, even Jesus, who is God, denied by the Jehovah Witnesses, Jesus, who knows everything, who is God Almighty, knew that Lazarus was going to raise from the dead. He knew that. But when he saw that his friend was dead and he saw that his friends and people who knew Lazarus are all in weeping in sorrows because here's a man, a friend, a, 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 a brother is dead. And the Bible records God the Father through Jesus Christ. The first time ever God, the Bible says, Jesus wept. And I guarantee on that cross, I guarantee there were sorrows and grief. From the times that when he stood before the Sanhedrin until he said, it is finished, there were sorrows and grief. And I want to tell you, Jesus Christ suffered harder than any man could suffer in pain. You have had not your body ripped open by a cat of nine tails. You have not gone into hell. But I'm one of the ones that believe that Jesus went into hell and he took degrees of the torment of hell while he was there and came out victorious. And he did it without medication. And he took on the sorrows of mankind. All. He had the sorrows. Twelve men followed his ministry. 
from the start of his ministry until the end of his ministry, he ended up with one man at that cross with him, John, the beloved disciple. He ended up with Peter cursing him. He ended up with Jewish uh, uh, Judas committing suicide who had betrayed Jesus. And few of the women were there. With no word about James and Matthew. Man of sorrow that he said I had no place to lay my head. How, how good did you do last night where you put your head? Cannot Jesus who is God come and comfort us through what he lived? Job says, God, you have eyes if I have. God can say, nope, don't have it. God, can you live as I live? Nope, can't say that. When Jesus Christ was born, and by the time of Jesus Christ died, God can say, I've done it. You've been rejected. We talked about the friends. If you've been rejected by friends, go to Jesus. He'd been rejected by people who had healed him. Imagine, that behind us is a hospital. And let, let's go back to the ministry of Jesus. Not today, not 2009, but let's, if we were to go back in the future and Jesus go through every room of that hospital. The Bible said everybody in that hospital would be healed of the, the, of the uh, ailments that they had. According to the Bible, according to the work of Jesus Christ and the apostles. The hospital behind me, we'd go, if we were taken back into the, into the past, into history, everybody in that hospital would be healed through the ministry of Jesus Christ. And imagine taking everybody of that hospital who had been healed by Jesus and then stand before Jesus and say, Crucify him! Where were those with the unclean spirits standing at Jesus' cross? Where were those who were blind but can now see Jesus being tortured and being beaten? Where is those that could not hear Pilate say, I washed my hand? Where were those? They have no ears to hear. Where are those that were sick and pulsy and all that? Where were the ones that died and Jesus Christ arose them from the, from the dead? Where are they when Jesus died? Oh, I got troubles, I got problems. So did Jesus. That's why he can come and take care of us. And the sorrows of evangelism, and this guy probably much better than I am, is he would watch souls. He would see people. He would watch people reject Jesus and taught Jesus and scorned Jesus and we know where they're going and even for me that's sad one of the burdens I have is I don't think they can hear me I know what's going to happen to them if they don't get right that breaks my heart while the bills over me roll even when my heart is breaking and like I said I just said that if you're involved in any true public ministry with the Holy Spirit operating in you and God using you as a clean vessel that your feet please God and only those that know the scriptures know what I'm talking about right now you will have in your time in the ministry your heart will break and there have been times that oh I wish I just give them the prosperity gospel ain't gonna do nothing Oh, if I just get you to say this prayer, I ain't going to do nothing. That's not salvation. And when your heart breaks, and I've done this with people in the prison, you, you talk to them, you witness to them, and they're not ready. I am not going to get them to say this prayer. I'm not going to get them to re rehearse these words. I am not going to pray for their salvation. For them. I'll pray for them, but not for them. I'm not going to do the salvation work. It, it's got to be there from their heart. And when they walk away as an agnostic, your heart, oh God, work on that person. Lord God, work on that seed. It's even more so that you don't know what happens to that person later on. I'm thinking about a guy I met I met in the public ministry, and he comes up to me and says, listen, I'm an agnostic. I don't believe, but I do believe, and I don't know what to believe. And I spoke with that guy. And I witnessed to that guy, and I gave him a crack, and he walked away saying, you know, I do little, know a little more, but he didn't know enough. And that man stole my prayer book, and I still pray for that man. 
and your heart earns, Lord God, give them more. Give them somebody that did better than what I can do. The Holy Spirit, which brings us to God. He, my comfort, helps my soul. And we need to help all the time. We need help in our own lives battling sin. You're battling the sin? Take it to the Lord. Say, Lord God, I struggle with it. Lord, I'm only flesh. <laughs> Lord, this flesh wins. Be honest with God. Tell Him. And then you can get that help. You can get that comfort. But you can't get it from God when you come boasting and pray. Look how good I am, Lord God. And that don't work. God's against pride and boasting. Come to him humbly. I'm weak. I've failed. And the Lord will give you help. Jesus. Ooh, Jesus again. What a guide and keeper. Jesus, and I hate to use it, but he's our GPS. Through the word of God, God will tell us what to do. What is the will of God? It's in the Bible. Read and study it. It's amazing. Again, I'm talking about evangelists. I'm talking about myself as evangelists. People come up to me and I'm preaching this. That's not what the Bible do. That's not what Jesus would do. That's turning people away. You fool. You have not studied and read the Bible. I let my light shine. You're not a guide. You're not a keeper. What do you mean by keeper? When you got a public ministry, you got to keep at it. You got to keep doing it. And it's got to be all the time. This man said he was on a circuit. He would travel in a, in a preacher's circuit. Going back to the same cities over and over and over. Paul went back to the, to the cities where he started church. There was a point that the Holy Spirit told Paul, no, we don't want you here. But well, you got to go over there. And like I said, we got to think one of our ministries right now, the Lord's like, the door is closed. That's it. I want to see if, you, if you're going to obey me. I want to see if you're going to do it. You're going to shut it down. We're shutting it down this week. We got something coming up next week. We got something to kept coming up at the end of this month. And we're hoping and praying the Lord will show another ministry. And he off the guy, because I don't know where to go. I don't know how to do it. I don't even know what to say. And there are times when you do go out and you read and study your Bible and then the Holy Spirit use your mouth and you go back from that conversation like, I didn't know I knew that verse. That's a guide. That's a keeper. Keeping the words in your heart that you may not sin against God. Keeping those words that you might be a guide for someone to know Jesus Christ. Keeping those words that you may be a guide to a Christian. You need to get out of that and start doing this. And many Christians come up to us, Christian, I'm not, I don't know if they're Christian, saved or not. Christians come up to us, that's not what our church would do. Well, you need to get out of that church. You need to get in a Bible-believing church and do what the Bible says. Get away from that panty waist. If you don't have a Bible-believing church, start one. I am trying to. And you may fail. I need a keeper. I need a guide. What do I do, Lord? While the tempest, whoa, storms, troubles, problems, they're coming and will come and are present. I am not going to give you, you know, clouds and sunshine to be in salvation, being of the Lord. Everybody's going to be hunky dory. I'd be a liar. My nose would grow 40 miles. Since I picked up and got saved and started witnessing and started doing what the Bible told me, I've had churches and I have Christians, I have friends, I have family forsake. And then scorn me and lie about me. Well, Jesus told Paul, they persecute me. There will be storms. Still is high. Storms about me. Night overtakes me. Darkness. Oh. He, my pilot. I like that because people say if Jesus is not the pilot, you're in the wrong seat. There you go. A pilot operates an airplane. I wonder there were airplanes back then. Never really. 
And I was going to say, yeah, the boats have pilots. You know, if you don't know that river channel, you're going to ground your boat. You're going to wreck that boat. You're going to wreck the engine. I had many times growing up as a lobsterman with lobstermen, and they're going off course, and the worst thing you can do besides break the engine is you go into a, into a shallow water and you've got seaweed that has wrapped around your prop. you got to spend time, a diver, bring that ship out of the water and you've got to clean off that prop of that seaweed. You cannot go where you're not supposed to go. That's the guide and keeper. There are char channel markers in the water say, all right, this is, this is how far you can go port, this is how far you can go starboard, and don't go off anywhere else. You may not see that rock, but here is a buoy to say, there's a, there's something here. It may not be a rock, it may be a, a sunken ship, it may not be a sunken, it may be some kind of obstacle, and you've got to have a chart. Now, I'm not talking much about airplanes, I don't know how they do airplanes. But I can assume that you can't just get in that airplane and go, all right, I'm just going to go for a ride. When you're driving a car, you got to stay on the black top. If you are driving on the sidewalk, you are in the wrong place. Then as you're piloting, as Jesus Christ is the pilot, the guide and the keeper. This is where I want you to go. I don't want you to go over there. This is when I want you to go. This is who I want you to go with. This is what I want you to do. This is where I want you. This is how I want you to do it. And when I want you to do it. Here's my cry. What's the cry? I'm in trouble. Oh, Lord God, no one's listening. Lord, they're, they're, they're not listening. Lord, they're... they're they're turning away, they're forsaking me. Lord God, these churches are going sour. Lord God, these people don't know what they're talking about. Lord, help! The fog has rolled in, Lord. I can't see. That's one of the scariest things. When you're out in the middle of the water and the fog rolls in. I've been in cases where we've heard, where I come from would have been the ferries. You heard the fog horns of the ferries like, you got to be on, where is it? You can't see it. You don't want to run into it. And it gets night. And yeah, you got you got lights on boats and you got lights on the shore. And still, the vast piece of water out there. And now you got to watch out for the lights. Now it's hard to see the lobster pot buoys. It's hard to see the channel markers. Some of them not ought not lit hard to see the obstacles. He need a pilot that knows the road and knows where to go. Set your eyes upon Jesus. The mark that Paul speaks about. Jesus. Woohoo! Jesus again. Amen. I do now receive him. Do it every day. Wake up in the morning, Lord God, I thank you. You give me a new day. Thank you for a night's sleep. Thank you for a night of prayer. Lord God, may I live better yesterday than I did today. To your honor and glory. And Lord God, once I step out of this bed, it's going to be troubles. It's going to be problems. There's going to be failures. Lord, help me through this day. More than all in him, I find. You know, every, there, there's no treasures on the earth that can match to what Jesus can give you. Do you want a health care plan that will give you no illnesses, no sicknesses, no hospital, no death, no medications, no New Jerusalem? And New Jerusalem, God will wipe away our tears. That's all through Calvary. That is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. The greatest benefits of all mankind is through Jesus Christ. And the greatest torments that man can have is to reject Jesus Christ. 
He has granted me forgiveness. Amen. Glory to God. That's the greatest, happiest news. My sins are not erased. My sins are gone. They are washed. What woman will take a pile of dirty clothes and put them in a washing machine and put that washing machine through all the cycles? And pull the clothes out and put them in the basket or whatever, but takes the clothes out of that wash me. What woman would look in that wash me? Well, where's those stains? Where, where, where's the dirty that, that were on my knees? Where's the grass stain? Where's the blood stain? Where is the filth and dirt that were on my clothes? They're gone. And if your sins are under the blood of Jesus Christ, when the Christian gets off into the judgment seat of Christ, them sins are gone, forgotten forever, and never will you have to answer to them. They're under the blood. If we confess our sins, and it says if, if we do not confess our sins, and when we stand at the judgment seat of Christ, those sins are that not have been confessed will burn as wood, hay, or stubble, but you won't burn. Those sins works will burn when you do it in the flesh. I am his. I can say that. And he is mine. I am the property of God through Jesus. I am a child of God. God is my father through Jesus. And when I die, or rapture, or both, I go to God. I am signed, sealed, and will be delivered one day. Hallelujah! What's your hallelujah in life? Oh, the team won! Oh, oh, oh. oh a bunch of men fighting over a ball! Oh, oh, oh. I got a raise! What be do? I got my degree, whoopee do, you ain't gonna get no job. Hallelujah, what a savior. What is the hallelujah? My savior, Jesus Christ. Glory to God. You know what my Facebook is dedicated to? It's dedicated to God and Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. What's a hallelujah? It's a savior. What is a hallelujah? What a friend. You know, I have left Jesus, but he's never left me. After I got saved, there was a period of time I backslid. Horribly and wickedly did I backslid. But you know when I finally came to my senses? After I've been wallowing in the mud of the, pig, of the pigsty, I said, you know what, I'm going to go back to the Father. Father is Jesus, Jesus the Father, the Son, they're, both, they're all three in one. When I came home, that Father had his arms out for me. I didn't meet Dad on the, on the porch, I, Dad met me on the path coming home. That's a friend. No one else in that particle man's father's farmyard or father's plantation whatever the father had for land no one else was there looking for the son but the father that's a friend when you go away and that friend is still there yeah i know you did wrong you, you sinned you went against me you didn't do right uh <laughs> Hope you enjoyed yourself and hope you enjoyed the excessive baggage and scars you got. You want to get right? Amen. Let's get right. Don't do it again. Come on. You know? If you go out and sin against the Lord again and you get right, come back, friend's still there. And even if you, you go out and you sin against the Lord, you're saved and you don't ever get right. When you walk away from the judgment seat of Christ, the ashes and everything that's done, the fire has tried all the work. Even if you don't have any crowns, you don't get any reward. Come on, let's go home. Let's go off to glory. 
within about a thousand seven years we'll have new jerusalem come on in the gates how's that for a friend so what's he do he's saving christ is still in the saving business they say people are still getting saved now, I don't believe as much as they say, but I'm a human, I'm wrong. I think there's a lot of gimmicks today in the ministries. Helping. He's the helper. Keeping. He won't lose me. God is not going to... Oh, man, where, where did Stiley go? Can't find him. Oh, attention, Angel Squad 47, step up forward. Go find Stiley. I don't know where I'd get with him. God attends the funeral of birds. He has every hair on my head numbered. He won't lose me. He has sealed me. He keeps me even when I go away from him. Loving. There's no greater love than the love of God. Especially there's no greater love of the love of God when you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. He is with me to the end. Now, this is a great end, but to the end there is no end with Jesus. I, I was, He is with me and then get rid of to the end. Because he's going to be with me in glory. He's going to be with me in New Jerusalem. He's going to be with me. There's no more. There is no end. And when you come to Revelation chapter 22. And, and when you read the final part in my Bible. Revelation 22. And it says the end. I cross that out. Because there is no end at the end of Revelation. It goes on again. You know that prodigal son. When the father has that the, the celebration. And they get the fatted calf. And they have the meal. And they get the shoes. And they put the, robe, the wardrobe on him. After the, the brother gets chewed out. You know that party never ended. And neither will it end for us. When we get to New Jerusalem. That's the only problem. To the end. That's, that's the only problem I got this end. To the end. Because there is no end. But I know what he's saying. As far as his human flesh. As far as the evangelistic work. As far as walking through this world. They're be coming to an end. But then the rapture. And when the, when the Lord shall change these vile bodies, it only just begun. I tell people, when you die, whether you're lost or you're saved, you've begun eternity. There is really no death. Every woman that, that is pregnant, and even if it's stillborn, you've been aborted, or death in the womb, or birth in the... Every woman that has become pregnant will populate heaven or hell one day. And every man that has been conceived will have no life ending. Now you may die in the flesh, but that, that doesn't end life. To be absent body, to be absent with the body and present with the Lord for the saved man. And the, and the rich man died and was buried and lifted up his eyes in hell. Once you conceive, life is really eternal life. He that has the Son has everlasting life, John said. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God. Now, a man does not have the Son. Does, I mean, it, God calls hell not life, but it is life. A miserable, tormented life. The wrath of God. But you're still living for eternity in hell in the lake of fire. Definitely. Definitely. When was the last time you sang our great Savior? Ask yourself. Ask your song leader. Put this one in the book. <laughs>